Hello everyone, welcome back. We are in Roanoke, Virginia for Big Lick Comic Con. So what you're seeing here is some books that I brought with me that I was going to try to sell at the convention. I've never done this before where I've brought books in to sell to vendors to try to either make cash or make trades. And man, this is what I'm going to do from here on out. Take a look at the venue. This is the Berglund Center in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, big turnout for this convention. This this place was packed. Uh, a great venue. So I've been here before for some Magic the Gathering uh, conventions with uh, Star City Games. And I've always had fun. I've always enjoyed my time here. Thought I would dr make the drive and uh, visit this Comic-Con. So right off the bat, we've got some comic dealers here to the right. They've got some great books, so I'm excited. Um, some, some really nice books. I take a look at this first death, and this dude that's the dealer literally like pops out of nowhere and comes over and it starts like straightening up the book and I, I mean I felt like I was like a uh, uh, you know like a stranger like I, I didn't really belong there I was like dude I, what are you doing <laughs> so they had some stuff that I was interested in so I was like I'm gonna try to sell um, some of this stuff to them he starts like grabbing at my bag we can look at this end up don't doing anything with him we go to this next guy. He's like a Funko Pop uh, dealer. And um, the guy that I had spoken to before told me to, to maybe talk to him because he's looking for a giant size X-Men. He offers me $2,000 cash for the X-Men. I, I turn him down and I keep walking. Um, this is kind of the area where the um, like the famous people, like the, the, the signature area, I, that's not really something that I am into, um, so I don't normally spend a lot of time there. Um, I was there pretty early, so it wasn't super crowded at this point, but man, it got to the point where I could barely get down these aisles. Um, this is the areas that you want to be looking for, looking in when you're going to these conventions, because this is where the good deals and books are that are, you know, they're not the big dealers that are out front and center. These are the little guys and gals where you can actually score some awesome dollar books and some awesome, uh, books in general like this. Um, Dr. Strange, number 169, first solo series of Dr. Strange in a CGC 5.5 okay he's wanting 450 that's a great price that book has been super hot and then right below it first brother voodoo um offered him 800 dollars for the pair cash instantly sold instantly could have offered potentially less um so right off the bat i am in a situation where i haven't traded anything i haven't sold anything i'm 800 dollars cash gone but i've got two awesome books Keeping on moving here. Um, got to get, got to watch out for the popo. Um, I think I go down another aisle here, and um, uh, sh Shooter Jim or Jim Shooter was there. That was kind of cool seeing him signing some stuff. Some awesome artists in this aisle. A lot of cosplayers. There's a Riddler. That's so cool. Um, Cosplay is not really my thing when I'm at these conventions. You know, I'm I'm there looking for books. I'm trying to trying to make some moves, get some books. So I go to this this dealer. Um, these folks, I, I don't know if they knew a whole lot about comics in general. Um, ended up getting one book from them. And this gentleman had some very, very nice books. And I was trying to make some moves. And he specifically had First Raz Ghoul, which I'm looking for. He hummed and hawed and looked, and no deals here. So I go to these guys, and they had no interest in buying things, which I thought would be a common theme that guys just not interested in buying anything. Their they're, economy's kind of tight. People are trying to sell. People are trying to make cash right now. Um, he had a lot of back issues. Uh, I think I end up this gentleman here. I, I told him I was gonna. I was trying to sell some things. He had absolutely no interest in buying. And honestly, just kind of looking at his wall books, there was nothing there at all that interested me. Um, so it, it was never really going to be a, a good place because if there's, you know, there's some books there that actually interest me, then 
more opportunities for trades. And okay, there he is. There was Jim Shooter. Um, went to these guys. These guys had the slabs. A um, lot of good books. A lot of great wall books. Um, a lot of older stuff. Not not so much the modern stuff. I mean, I, I think they had like first Riri, first Cameo Riri on your top left, 9.8s. Um, I ended up looking at their uh, Fantastic Four 49 and 52. A little overpriced. Um, these guys were not interested in my books at all other than the giant size X-Men. Um, and they didn't really seem like they had any interest in modern books at all. So um, I didn't think that I was going to be able to make any deals here. There's first uh, Asajj Ventress. That but's a five hundred dollar book in a nine point four, so that that's a that's a real book. Um, yeah, I mean they had some old Fantastic Four stuff here that was really cool. Um, decent prices on that stuff, like hundred dollar books. Um, a lot of Star Wars stuff. I think a lot of their moderns were in this these front cases, and these were the guys that if it's not nine point eight modern, they don't want it. So I come back and talk to the owner and the guy that actually put on the convention, and he had a really cool book. He had uh, Flash, um, first appearance of Reverse Flash, um, that classic Silver Age book, um, and uh, I, I wanted that book. It was in a 4.5 CGC, but we couldn't make a deal. Um, do some more digging here, Some just trying to find some Green Lantern back issues, but I, I'm just not willing to spend five dollars a piece on some of these back issues that are not in like super high grade anyway we get here these are my guys right here so um the gentleman on the right he was looking through the books first and then the gentleman on the left came in later and you can see there's two stacks here there's a stack to the right which is all my slabs and then the giant size x-men and invincible number one over to the left they have an X-Men 94 that they're selling for $980. He's humming and hawing. I want that book. I'm trying to make something happen. So hes they're pretty interested in this stack of slabs to the right. And um, they are kind of seeing the value there that it may be easier to sell $100 slabs as opposed to you know a $980 single book. Um they are definitely interested. He's humming and hawing. Uh, the gentleman on the right's kind of staying out of this. I can tell the gentleman on the left is that's who owns that book specifically. He's humming and hawing. This is about to happen. We make this freaking deal. We get the X Men ninety four for everything I have, other than the giant size X Men and the Invincible number one. So um, to me, I'm. I mean, that's. That, that, that's a thousand dollar trade, a thousand dollars for 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 moderns, and then a thousand dollars for that that book. He has to take a picture of it. He doesn't want to see it go, but I mean, you can see I traded a bunch of nine point sixes, nine point fours, um, super moderns for this second storm, second colossus, technically uh, second Wolverine, maybe third Wolverine, second uh, Nightcrawler, second Thunderbird. Love this book huge huge buy so we've already gotten two awesome books we, we and we got got rid of some slabs that i didn't really want so i'm feeling great i still have the giant size x-men number one in my possession and the invincible number one so i've got options i've got a two thousand dollar cash cash option uh from from one gentleman and then nobody's biting on this invincible number one nobody's interested in it and i'm like this is a hot book. Invincible is awesome. Why Why is nobody wanting this? Till we come here. So at first, these guys did not seem like super wheel and deal type guys. They had some awesome books, a lot of which I was very interested in. Um, but they didn't seem like wheel and deal type guys. Uh, the gentleman that I speak to here, he directs me to, to the older gentleman He's liking that giant size X Men. I say I want twenty two hundred for it. I've got a two thousand offer. I want twenty two. He bites. He buys it twenty two hundred dollars cash money for the giant size X Men. I, I he he kind of is humming and hawing and not saying a whole lot. 
but he just kind of walks away and I'm like, okay, he's not interested. No, he's interested. He's back there grabbing $2,000 in $2,200 in $100 bills. And I'm like, I just, I mean, this, this is a game changer. I, I love that giant size X-Men, but I want a better grade. I want something more mid grade. Um, and I'm willing to let it go. And, uh, that, that's what happened. He, he's, he was, he just, he fell in love with that book. And I don't know if he was wanting it for his personal collection or he was wanting to buy it now and hold on to it so he could sell it later for a, a good value. Um, but I, he was, he wanted it and, you know, he saw the flaws with it. I mean, it's, it's got a split spine. It's every bit of a 3.0. Um, I didn't personally, uh, clean and press that book or get it encapsulated. I bought it encapsulated. It had the custom label. I bought that from Instagram and uh, I, I parted with it. I made money on it. Um, after that, I have $2,200 cash in my pocket. I've got two awesome, uh, sorry, three awesome keys. I, I'm, I'm feeling like a million bucks. Um, end up uh, going back to a couple of the vendors that I had seen before, just kind of wheeling, dealing, trying to trying to get some good deals, end up buying a couple other awesome keys. So stick around uh, to the hall where I show you guys what we got. This gentleman here, uh, I bought some things from him um, in Huntington, West Virginia at a con, and I would have loved to, to work with him and deal with him. He's one of the best guys at this convention. Um, but he just didn't really have anything that was that was striking me. And after I came back, I'm still trying to wheel and deal with this Invincible number one. I'm trying to get that Ra's al Ghul, um, and he also had Green Lantern uh, number 76. I, I was trying to to make some kind of move with 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 that, and he just he's one of those guys. It's just the the modern books don't interest him and and that's kind of what I've been preaching what I've been harping on so many times in so many of my videos guys the modern books the 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 guys that have money these dealers just don't they don't bite on that and especially in a grade like a 9.2 like this invincible is it's just not there for them and they won't they won't bite on these they won't they won't buy them so guys I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let's jump over and let's show these books closer up and let's talk about the haul. All right, guys, we're back. What a really cool con. Big Lick Comic Con in Roanoke, Virginia. It was it was a great time. Um, had been to that arena before, uh, the Berglund Center. Great venue. I highly recommend going. Um, a lot of friendly vendors and got some awesome stuff. So as you saw, I was doing a lot of wheeling and dealing, had never really done that before, and we got some good books. So if you remember that first vendor, the guy that was like trying to snatch my uh, uh, book bag away and like try to like look into my stuff, he had some really good books. Specifically this, Green Lantern number 85. This is when Speedy does heroin, man. So this is that anti-drug issue of Green Lantern, that like super famous cover. Speedy's there, he's like shooting up heroin, and, and Green Lantern and Green uh, Green Arrow are like behind him, like, oh my God, the horror, it's terrible, we have to do something. This is like an oversized issue. Um, this is not a spine roll on the side of that book. That's just how that book looks. So super, Glad to finally get this. This is one of those ones I've been looking for, including Green Lantern number 65, uh, 85, and then 87, First John Stewart. So trying to piece those Green Lantern books together. And, and it was just so awesome to, you know, bring books to a con and not have to worry so much about, you know, what you're spending. Because there's so many expenses that go into this. Your gas is crazy right now. It's like freaking five dollars a gallon. You know, you got to worry about your hotel. You got to worry about food. You got to pay for the the entry into the the convention. I mean, th these fees start adding up, and especially with my like IPA habits. I mean, that's like six dollars a beer. I mean, this stuff's like starting to add up. So it's always good to sell something or trade for something so that you can, you know, you, you're not feeling so bad about spending the bucks. Uh, got this for $200, uh, $210 uh, cash. Uh, 
So he had it listed at 250, got it for 210. All right, this next book is Tales of the Teen Titans number 44. This is the first appearance of Nightwing. So um, this is this is a book I got from the gentleman, uh, well, actually several several gentlemen, and then I think somebody's wife. It was at that far end of the uh, convention. Um, they had three copies of this book, uh, three copies of the first appearance of Nightwing, and I took I I looked at the lowest grade version of all of them. So they wanted seventy dollars for this book. Um, I got it for fifty dollars cash. I think this book at its best would be like an 8.0. I'd say it may be around like a 7.5, 8. I, I don't know. There, there's some color breaking spine ticks. Uh, it's just, you know, it's 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 a it's an 8.0 type caliber book. And if you guys have watched some of my previous stuff, we got a huge lot of Tales, uh, Tales of the Teen Titans in uh, the new Teen Titans that George Perez run, and then Tales of the Teen Titans when it transitions over. We got a huge run of that for basically near to nothing when we bought that huge lot for $150 for all those raw books. So this was one of the books that was missing from that, and I'm glad to have it in the collection. This is a book I've been kind of looking for, and pretty reasonably priced book. All right, so we're at $260 right there. Um, these last three books are slabs, uh, two of which uh, I believe, well, actually, I think you, you guys saw all of these in the previous videos, but here is some close-ups. This is Doctor Strange 169. First, Doctor Strange in his own title, Origin of Doctor Strange Retold, 5.5 off-white pages. This is a great cover. This book got pretty hot um, when the new Doctor Strange movie came out. This is probably like Doctor Strange, he's probably one of his best covers, especially from the Silver Age. His first appearance in Strange Tales 110 is kind of a weak cover. He's not on the cover. We got like a, I think we got like Human Torch and something else, somebody else. I got to get that book at some point, but this is a great book. 5.5, and this book has taken a little bit of a dip. Uh, the gentleman had it offer, uh, had a, uh, price on it. What was it? $450. Um, like I said, I got this book and then the next book, which is uh, Strange Tales number 169. I love how both of these have the same number. Um, Strange Tales number 169. This is First Brother Voodoo. 7.5 off-white, two white pages. It's the origin and first appearance of Brother Voodoo. It's the first issue of Strange Tales since May of 1968 as well. This came out in 73. So uh, this book is just continuously holding its value. It increases in value. It dips a little bit, but it, it just keeps holding value because it just makes so much sense for Brother Voodoo to be a part of the MCU and to be a part of Doctor Strange. Everybody loves Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is probably one of the best parts of the Marvel movies, and, and he just probably one of the best Marvel characters there is, in my opinion. I just finished the um, the Jason Aaron run, and it was fantastic. I love that. Highly recommend reading that. And Brother Voodoo made his appearances in that run, and he added a lot to the story. He was another magic user, and this is this is just something that it, it it's like a slam dunk situation. Brother Voodoo is going to come. It's just a matter of time. And finally got his book. I saw uh, one of one of the more popular uh, YouTubers saying that this is a overvalued book, which I can kind of see that. You know, it's not a, a crazy uh, first appearance. You know, Brother Voodoo is known, but it's not. You know, he's not like Iron Man, Spider Man. You know, like the big the big guys. But um, this is a good book, and it holds its value. Seven point five is right where I want to be with this book. So I bought this book and the Doctor Strange book for $800 combined. He wanted $550 for this, uh, and then he wanted $450 for that. So I got, what was that, basically like $150 off um, for these two. He might have taken $700 in retrospect, but I'm, I'm happy with what we got. So the big deals of the day was selling that giant size X-Men 3.0 uh, with the custom label for $2,200 cash. That was huge. The other big deal was all those other books that are, you know, those 9.4, 9.6 is modern books that I didn't really want. I 
I had tried to I tried to sell them previously. You guys might have seen my Instagram post. You might have seen heck. You might have might have seen it on eBay where I've been trying to sell them. I just had very little luck to getting what I wanted to get out of them. And man, I got a deal. This is X Men number ninety four from nineteen seventy five. This is second appearance Nightcrawler, Storm, Thunderbird, and Colossus. And it also might be the second first full appearance of Wolverine. This is that first. Uh, X-Men in, in, in the Uncanny X-Men run, it's their first uh, book together. This is where Chris Claremont takes over. And really, in my opinion, X-Men kind of starts, especially for me, and I know a lot of other collectors as well. I don't really collect Silver Age X-Men. I'm not there yet. It, I think it's actually pretty affordable right now uh, in comparison to a lot of other runs, but I'm going to stick with what I got. And this really kind of completes me from like 94 to like 150-ish. I think I'm missing like a couple issues from that. But this this is this this is right where I want to be with this book as well. 6.5 um, off-white to white pages. Uh, the two guys there, super friendly. They're actually probably two of my favorite vendors there. Um, he kind of hated to see it go. Uh, he had it listed at 9.85, I believe. I believe it was a price, which is is about right. I mean, like eight fifty to nine hundred, I think is its uh, fair market value. And man, for those slabs, if you guys saw what I what I was selling, I, I think that's I think that's I think I did very well. I kind of am transitioning more to, you know, using those one hundred dollar books, those one hundred fifty dollar books as kind of leverage and uh, as a, as a trading chip, a bargaining chip to get to books like this. This th this book, you know, this is a tried and true book, a high value book. I would say 90% of, you know, hardcore comic collectors know what this is, appreciate this book and value this book highly. You know, these, you know, fresher ink, modern books from like 2005 to to now, you know, they're good books and they they can potentially surge but they crash and specifically that jane foster um you know cover her th third appearance on that thor number one it's a great cover that jason aaron run but it's just like you know that's not a it, I, it's not a great investment book cool book great cover it would look good on the slab wall but it's not a good investment book. Also, I have no nostalgia for that. I have no passion for that. I don't particularly care. But X-Men, I'm all about them X-Men. And I'm all about this run, the uncanny X-Men, the true X-Men run. Guys, I think I did awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I put a lot of effort into this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.